Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Sebu Gunteni, and I am an IoT solution architect specialist here at AWS, helping our industrial customers to build end to end industrial data solutions with AWS IoT services. In today's webinar, I'm going to walk you through pretty much everything you need to know on how to build an end-to-end -end industrial IoT solution with AWS. First, I'm going to start with the challenges that most industrial customers face. And then I will go through an end-to-end -end industrial IoT architecture with AWS services. Then I will walk you through a step-by-step -step customer uh, demo where I'll show you how you can collect, organize, analyze data that is being ingested from your industrial equipment into AWS. We also learn how to compute industrial platform, uh, industrial metrics, and also how to integrate AI and machine learning into your industrial production to detect any anomaly. Then I will give you a few resources on how to learn more about AWS IoT industrial services. And then I'll take questions. So talking to our industrial customers, this is uh, a few challenges that most of them face. The very first one is a data access. And, uh, if, if you have ever been to a power plant or an industrial site, you can see that there are a lot of legacy equipments. And some of those equipment were built and designed to last as long as 30 years. Right? And oftentimes, it becomes very difficult to integrate those legacy equipment with newer piece of equipment that are being manufactured and support newer protocols such as OPC UA or MQTT. And also in the industrial settings, uh, data reside in silo, which means for an engineer or manufacturer to be able to get data from those machines for troubleshooting purposes, they will have to be actually at a physical site to get data from those machines. And in my personal experience, I used to be a field engineer. I can't tell you how many times I have to wake up at night, drive to a plant, just because I want to collect data from a piece of equipment I wanted to use for troubleshooting or maybe root cause analysis. And as you can see, data access is very important. And our goal is to give our customers the tool that they need in order to democratize data and make data more access accessible securely. The second challenge is a data management where it becomes very difficult to organize the large amount of data that is being generated or produced by industrial equipment. And that's making it very difficult for data scientists to be able to extract and analyze data that they can use to predict any equipment failure. The third challenge is a scaling part. And most of industrial customers have multiple plants across uh, multiple plants. And uh, those plants may have multiple production lines and multiple piece of equipment. And in order for customer to scale up and build a platform that they can use to ingest data from all the sites that they have and all the thousands of equipments that they have within the fleet, it becomes very difficult to scale up. The real-time decision-making is also a challenge. And this is because a lot of customers needs to be able to make decision within seconds when there is an issue with the equipment. And most of the customers, DCS or PLCs, are not designed to give insight into metrics that they can use to track equipment um, efficiency in near real time. And the very last one is a security piece, which is very important. And just talking to a lot of customers, one of the reasons why a lot of them do not want to embrace uh, a digital transformation or industry 4.0 is because of security. Right? 
And maybe it is because of local requirement where you are required to keep data locally at the site, or some customers just not comfortable to send data to, uh, to the cloud. And when I go through this demo, I will give you uh, some resources and give you a list of go through some of the AWS IoT services you can use to solve all these challenges. So here is an end-to-end -end industrial solution architecture on AWS. And here I'm going to start at a level zero. Right? And I have built this architecture according to the IAC 95 model and the Purdy model as well. And typically uh, at the level zero, that's where you have the piece of equipment, you have the sensors, uh, the PLCs. And for this particular architecture here, let's assume that uh, these PLCs support OPC UA, Ethernet IP, or Modbus TCP out of the box. So typically for an industrial solution, these PLCs or scalar system or historian that have OPC UA protocol will be connected to an edge gateway. And the edge gateway is typically a hardware that's going to be installed locally on the plant floor or in your data center. center. And this edge gateway be, will be used to collect data from your industrial equipment. And for AWS on this edge gateway, we deploy AWS IoT Greengrass and uh, AWS IoT Sitewise connector. And again, when I go through my demo in the next few minutes, I will show you how you can connect uh, a PLC to an edge gateway and also ingest the data from the edge gateway into the cloud. So going back to the architecture, so this PLC will be connected to the edge gateway running AWS IoT Greengrass. And the data that is being collected from the equipment will be ingested in AWS IoT Sitewise. And AWS IoT Sitewise is a managed service that you can use to ingest, organize your industrial data at a scale. So when the data is ingested in AWS IoT Sitewise, you can visualize the data using Sitewise Monitor, which is a web application that you can use to visualize your industrial data near real time. And Sitewise is also supported at the edge. And with Sitewise Edge, you can also visualize your industrial data locally at the edge without an internet connectivity to the cloud. And within Sitewise, there is also support for our alarms out of the box. And with the alarms, you can have notifications sent out via SMS or email when one of your equipment uh, is performing above a threshold that you have set up. And I will go through all these details in the demo as well. And uh, the second part of this, uh, part of the demo I will go through is how you can use a computer vision to improve your production, right? So think about a situation you are uh, a customer that produced, manufactured a, a particular product. And uh, typically you have a camera at the end of your production line, and this camera is taking pictures of the product that you are manufacturing. And typically, uh, in order for you to use a computer vision to detect any defect in your, with your product. You can um, upload a few set of images and typically those are images with anomaly and images that are normal into Amazon S3. And when the images are uploaded in Amazon S3, then you can use Amazon Lookout for Vision to train a model based on the images that have been uploaded in Amazon S3. And when the model is trained with Amazon Lookout for Vision, the model will be deployed back at the edge on an appliance that is running AWS Panorama, which is a machine learning appliance and a software development kit that allows 
used to bring computer vision at the edge. And typically, uh, the panorama appliance can easily be connected to your legacy camera that you have and also works with AWS IoT Greengrass. And after the machine learning has been deployed on the panorama appliance, you can detect any defect that is being uh, within that has been produced with your manufacturing product, right? Near real time at the edge. So here I'm going to get into my demo. And the goal of the first demo is to show you how you can collect, organize, and analyze data from industrial equipment. And AWS IoT SiteWise is a service you can use to easily collect, organize, analyze data from industrial equipment at a scale. And also within SiteWise, we have out of the box features that you can use to compute metrics and your OEE. And the OEE is the overall equipment effectiveness. Right? And the goal of the OEE is to track how your production line, how your assets are performing in your plant or in your production line. Now I'm going to get into the demo from uh, the AWS IoT console. And uh, this is the AWS IoT SiteWise console. And before I get too much into this console, I wanted to show you uh, an OPC US server that I have here. And as I have shown you earlier on the architecture, typically you may have an OPC US server and you want to ingest data from the OPC US server into the cloud. So I have here I have an OPC US server that is running uh, Cap Server OPC. And on this OPC US server, I'm simulating tags that are very similar to what you will see in a typical manufacturing, right? So here I have a, uh, a division which is called Stamping, and I have configured a few tags. And within the site of uh, the Capwell OPC US server, I can click on a quick OPC US client. And from here, you can see all the simulating tags that I have, and uh, you can see all the tags changing value. And these are all the tags that I am going to ingest into AWS IoT SiteWise using the Edge Gateway. One component of the OPC UA server I would like to show as well is the OPC UA configuration. So Capware comes out of the box with an OPC UA configuration manager that can be used to create endpoints. And here, this is the endpoint of the OPC UA that I'm going to configure in AWS IoT SiteWise. This is a security policy. And also with the Cap, Capware OPC UA configuration manager, you can trust clients as well. And uh, I will go more details into this as when I get into the AWS console. Here I'm going to show a napkin drawing of a typical uh, manufacturing settings. And think about a situation you are a company called Amazon Smart Manufacturing. And I use Amazon because we all love Amazon right, for the two days free shipping. So out of this Amazon Smart Manufacturing company, there are multiple divisions. Right? And the first division is stamping. Second one is the powertrain, casting, and the final assembly. And typically for each of the division, there can be multiple sites. And for the purpose of this demo, let's assume that out of this stamping division, there are two sites, one called Chicago and Houston. And out of the Chicago site, there is a plant called ORD11. And out of the ORD11 plant, there are multiple lines, line one through five. And then you can get more into the line and see some of the working center, sub working center, and some of the machines that you have at each of these uh, sub-working center, right? And when I get into the SiteWise console, I will show you how this napkin drawing that I'm showing here can be used to build an asset hierarchy within AWS IoT SiteWise. So as I showed you earlier, there is a Capware OPC US server, which is connected to an edge gateway. And the edge gateway, in order for the edge gateway to be 
connected to the cloud. As I mentioned earlier, it needs to be configured with AWS IoT Greengrass, right? And the SiteWise connector. So here in the AWS IoT SiteWise console, the very first component that is needed is the gateway, right? Which is the Edge Gateway configuration. And it is actually very easy to create and configure a gateway. So just you can click on here. And right now we have two versions of AWS IoT Greengrass, but the Greengrass version two that was released recently at reInvent back in December is the software is the Greengrass version that we recommend to customers. And here I have already created a gateway. And uh, let's get through the details of this gateway configuration. So this gateway has been created and uh, connected to the cloud. So you can see here the gateway connectivity. Here it is connected. I have the gateway ID. And uh, this is the ID or the name of the Greengrass core that is being used, right? And this is the Greengrass core that has been deployed locally on at the edge. And for this demo as well, I have uh, I have stand up an EC2 instance that is uh, running Amazon Linux 2. But again, with Greengrass, you can use any uh, Linux distribution such as Ubuntu or Rare. So within the Edge gateway configuration, one of the capability is the Edge as well. And you can decide if you want to have the site was Edge configure. So the data collection part enables you to collect data from the OPC UA server. And SiteWise support OPC UA, Modbus TCP, and Ethernet IP out of the box. And the data processing part is going to give you the ability to use SiteWise Edge in order to compute some metrics and transform locally at the edge. Right? And it is important to build to have uh, those Matrix and transform computer locally at the edge so that you have a dashboard or the metrics available in case the connectivity from the edge to the cloud is down. And this is because we know that a lot of industrial customers have plants in remote places where the internet connection, where the internet connectivity to the cloud may not be always available. And this is why we recently released our AWS IoT SiteWise Edge for our customer to give them the ability to have all the, all the features of SiteWise at the edge. So now that I cover the edge capability, uh, the next thing will be to set up the data source. And for this particular demo, I wanted to have the edge gateway connected to an OPC UA server. And this is the Capware OPC UA that I showed earlier. And I'm going to get into the detail of this, of this data source and show you some of the configuration that are required. So the source name that I'm using here is Amazon Smart Manufacturing OPC US Server. And the local endpoint here, this is the local endpoint of the OPC US Server that you have on your plant floor. And that's the endpoint that I showed earlier when I was sharing uh, the Capware OPC US server, and this is the endpoint here. And this part is very important, and typically because we want our customer to be secure, security is job zero here at AWS. If there is a firewall in between the OPC US server and the Edge Gateway, then the firewall will have to be configured for TCP 49, 49, TCP 49 320, because that is a port that has been used by uh, Capware OPC UA out of the box. And when it comes to the node ID for selection, this is typically when you have multiple PLCs and you are trying to filter the amount of data that you are looking to send to the cloud. Right. And for the data destination, you can decide to send the data to AWS IoT SiteWise or to some other AWS services, such as uh, IoT Analytics, Kinesis Data Stream, or an Amazon S3. But for the purpose of this demo, I want the data that has been collected from the OPC US server to be sent to IoT SiteWise. And in the advanced configuration here, 
there are a few important uh, settings. The very first one is the message security mode. This is where you have to configure a security mode that has been configured in the OPC US server. And just I will jump back to the CAP server really quick. And here in this OPC US server, the security policy is basic SHA-256, sign and encrypt. So when I'm configuring this edge gateway in a cloud, I will have to make sure that this security mode is the same as set up in the OPC US server. And with this security mode, it, all the data that is being sent from the OPC US server to the edge gateway is going to be encrypted. And some OPC US servers require authentication using any, any password. And if that's the case, customers can use AWS Secret Manager to manage those credentials as well. And uh, lastly, the property groups was also is also a new feature that was released at reInvent back in December 2020. And with the property groups, you can uh, again add additional data node that you can use to filter the amount of data you want to send uh, to the cloud. And with the group settings, within the group settings, you can select the scan mode you want to use. And the scan mode is going to dictate how the site-wise OPC UA client is going to collect data from the OPC US server. And by default, it is set to subscribe, which means the site-wise OPC UA client that is going to reside on the edge gateway is going to subscribe to tags on the OPC US server, and those tags will be ingested into the edge gateway and then to IoT site-wise. But with the poll scan mode, that means the site-wise OPC UA client is going to call the OPC US server at a particular interval that you have set up here and collect data. And we have feature for dentment settings. And this is where you can actually make some settings. So for instance, if you have a particular tag that does not change value very often, you can put uh, the dentment here and only send the data to the cloud when uh, the data actually exceeds and a value that you have set up, it can be a percentage or maybe an absolute value. So for instance, if you have a tag that is currently reading about 30 degrees Celsius, for instance, on a regular basis, you can set up an absolute here, which is going to allow the data to be sent to the cloud only when uh, that particular temperature reading exceeds the particular value you have set up here. So that's the end of the gateway configuration. And the way it works, so when the gateway is uh, set up here, you have set up the data source. Uh, within the SiteWise console, you are going to, uh, the SiteWise is going to give you a script, right, an installer that you can copy to the edge gateway and run. So when the installer is run, uh, all the resources that you need, such as the OPC UA connector, uh, the stream manager, all the resources you need in order for you to use SiteWise Edge and get the data collected from the OPC US server will be automatically configured. And going from uh, the Edge configuration, when the Edge gateway is configured, you are able to connect the Edge gateway to the OPC US server. The next step is going to be uh, the model. So within SiteWise, uh, an asset model is a virtual representation of your industrial asset, right? So here, if you have uh, a conveyor, if you have a crowder, pretty much all the assets that I have shown you on the napkin drawing can be represented virtually here in AWS IoT SiteWise. And as you can see here, I have multiple models. I have a model for the motor here, for the pneumatic cylinder, for the pump, and even have a model for the manufacturing here, which is in this case, that's my Amazon Smart Manufacturing. And customers can use CloudFormation. Uh, you can build your asset model in a console as well. So let me just focus on this stamping line model for a second. And some of the component that you can configure in a model 
are here. So the very first one is the attribute definition. So the attribute definition is typically things that does not change very often. And this can be a serial number, a location, and those are typically things that do not change very often. And the second component of an asset model is the measurement definition. And within the measurement definition, this is where you define the tags that will be ingested right into the cloud. And here I have three tags, bad count, finished bad count, and machine state. So that means these are the tags that I have currently configured on this particular asset or equipment in a field. The third one is a transform function definition. And with transforms, AWS actually provides you mathematic expression out of the box that you can use to transform data. And this transform function can be anything from variable operation and functions. So here I'm using a function which is called equal. And what I'm doing here is that for this particular machine, I'll just jump back to the measurement definition. I have a machine state that is being, that's a tag I have on this particular model. And this machine state is going to have multiple tags value that are being ingested into the cloud. And some of the values that's coming from uh, the machine state is 1024, 1020, 1000, 1111. So I'm, here I'm using this equal function to say if the data that is being ingested into the cloud is 1111, then I want to output one, which means my machine is running. But then if it's anything else, I'm going to output zero to say the machine is not running, right? So I'm actually using this function here to, the, to find the state of my machine and check if it's running, if it is stop, if it is idle or at fault. And within the matrix definition, we also provide, again, functions out of the box. And this function can be variable, constant, or uh, function that you can use to compare. But here, I'm using a function that is called uh, state time. And with the state time function, you can find the amount of time in seconds where your machine has been at a particular state. Right? So here, I'm using the state time function to find the amount of time that my machine has been in this uh, in a false state, idle state, or stopped. And the goal of all these metrics is for me to compute some KPIs or the availability of the machine here. And the formula that I have for availability is here. I can also do some averaging here and find uh, the failures, which is going to be the sum of the bad count that I have in my production and also the successes. And again, the, all, the goal of all these metrics, the goal of us giving these functions out of the box to our customers is to give them the ability to compute some KPIs or OEE, overall equipment effectiveness in a cloud. And within the metrics in SiteWise, you can define a particular interval at which you want the metrics to be computed. You can go from one minute, five minutes, an hour, a day, up to seven days. So here I have a few metrics that have been computed every five minutes. And I have some other ones that I wanted to do every one day. And just last night, we have a new feature within SiteWise, which is giving customer the ability to do custom metrics, right? So you can now build uh, custom metrics within SiteWise and not be restricted to use the five minutes or maybe an hour or daily metrics that uh, was previously required. And one thing I would like to cover here too is uh, the site was edge. And typically when you create uh, a model, you can decide to configure the model for site was edge, or if you wanted all the data that have been collected in, your, in the edge gateway to be sent to the cloud. So let's take a look at the uh, configuration for the edge. So for this particular model, I'm using a custom edge configuration. But again, with this current configuration here, I have the option to compute all these metrics locally at the edge, right? And again, 
me compute, uh, computing these metrics locally at the edge will give me the ability to have my OEE, the full time, the daily report locally at the edge. And this can be available at the edge as well without a, a connectivity to the cloud. And another uh, configuration is to compute all the property at the edge, right? And again, with this current configuration here, as you can see here, I don't have the option to make any changes. So all these metrics will just be automatically configured, um, computed at the edge, and, be, and the result is going to be forwarded to the cloud. And the third one is no edge configuration, which is a default. I'm also going to cover uh, another model here. And this model is going to be the Crowder station model here. And this, for this particular model, this is uh, a model that I have on my production line. And again, when it comes to the measurement definition, I have a few tags uh, that's coming from this model here, the current frequency and so on. But here within SiteWise, you can also define alarms, right? And uh, I'll show you the alarms definition here, right here. And for this particular model, I have configured alarms and I wanted to have a notification sent out via SMS or email when the current or the speed of this particular model exceeds a threshold that I have set up. And for this demo, I want to have a notification sent out when uh, the current of this model is above uh, 16 amp amps and also uh, if the speed of this model is above 1750 RPM. So this covers how you can uh, create asset models within SiteWise. So now that you have a model created, the next thing will be to configure uh, the asset. So for the asset configuration, this is where you can actually define your asset hierarchy. And as I have shown you earlier, you can go from uh, the same hierarchy that I showed on a napkin drawing. You can build the same thing within SiteWise. So you have a company here, uh, Amazon Smart Manufacturing, uh, step in line, and also uh, to site Chicago and Houston. And I can keep drilling down into each of these uh, assets here. But here, I will let's take a look at the uh, ORD 11 line one and the measurement tab. So within the measurement here for the asset configuration, one capability is the alias, where you can make uh, the relationship between this particular tag and the live data that will be ingested from the OPC US server. Right? And so for this particular tag right now, this is the alias as it, it has been defined in the data source, which is the OPC US server here. And if I squeeze this window a little bit, you can see uh, I have some live value here. And this is all live value that have been ingested into SiteWise from the OPC US server. And uh, so now that you have uh, the gateway set up, the model created, the asset hierarchy, the next step will be to visualize uh, the data near real time using SiteWise Monitor. So that's the component here, SiteWise Monitor. You click on portal. And here I have created one portal here. And this portal is actually open. You can click on this link to open a portal. And for the SiteWise Monitor, uh, you can use uh, SSO or IAM to get access to different type of users. So the way SiteWise Monitor works, the first thing will be to create a project. And here I created a project which is called Connected Factory Stamping Demo. Right? And when the project is created, you have to add assets to the project. And for this demo, I added all the assets part of the Amazon Smart Manufacturing to this particular project. But you can decide to add a uh, sub asset from this uh, Amazon Smart Manufacturing to this particular project, right? And when you have the project built, you added the asset, then you can build monitoring dashboard. And for the monitoring dashboard, you can build multiple and you can build a monitoring dashboard for each persona that you have in your company. And here, let's review uh, a monitoring dashboard that I have built to monitor the OEE. 
And within Sidewise here, you have you can actually go up to 90 days to see uh, the data that is being ingested. But for this particular demo, I will go for the last hour. Right, it's going to refresh in a minute. So I have built uh, a dashboard which is showing the OEE. So think about a situation if you are a print manager, you actually manage multiple sites, the Chicago and the Houston site. This monitoring dashboard is going to be useful for you to see how the Chicago site is performing and also the Houston site is performing as well. And I can scroll down a little bit where I have another dashboard that I'm using to track the OEE at each of the lines at the ORD 11 plant and also the same for all the lines at the, I, the site in Houston, right? Again, this will just give you a very good overview. And it's actually very easy to make changes to this dashboard here in SiteWise. You just have to click on edit. And when you click on edit, uh, you can just do drag and drop, right? So I can click on this template line here. I can just drag stack here. And we also provide multiple uh, visualization here. We have lines, bar, timeline available. And also within SiteWise, you can also add some threshold to the data that is being uh, visualized. Now let's review uh, a second dashboard, which can be useful, useful for the process engineer or a line supervisor who wants to uh, monitor uh, a particular equipment. Right. So again, here is uh, a monitoring dashboard, which I'm using to monitor one of the models that I have on ORD 11, line one, right? And for the past 10 minutes, I can view the data. And you can see here that this is all live data that I have ingested into uh, the cloud. Right? I can change the time, go to the past 30 minutes. And I can see the voltage, I can see the current frequency. And again, I can click, easily click on this edit here and make some changes to my monitoring dashboard. And you can also visualize the alarms in the site-wise monitor. So here I can see the status of this particular alarm. And when I zoom in here, there was an alarm that was sent uh, a couple of days ago and I have acknowledged these alarms, which means that I'm actually looking into the issue. And for the speed here, the live data that I have coming right now into the cloud is 1724. But if this value would exceed 1750, which I have set up as the threshold for my alarm, then I'm going to have a notification sent out to me via email or text message. And then this particular window will go red. So this is how you can use SiteWise Monitor to, in a cloud to visualize all the data that is being ingested from your assets. And for SiteWise Edge, uh, we give our customer the ability to use uh, a software which is called uh, Ops Hub to manage the gateway that is on the plant floor. And within the SiteWise uh, Edge, uh, you can use Ops Hub to open a portal Right, so here I uh, use Opsop to open a portal here and uh, just gonna wait a few seconds to, now that I have this portal here, and as you can see, the previous dashboard that I was showing you was from the cloud, but this that new dashboard that I'm showing has a local IP here, which means this local dashboard can be accessible at the plant without an internet connectivity to the cloud. And here I can click on this monitoring dashboard for ORD 11 line one model here. And I can see uh, the same dashboard that we saw earlier in the cloud locally at the edge, right? So that means even if the connectivity from the cloud, from the edge to the cloud is down, uh, I can still have this monitoring dashboard available locally at the edge. And lastly, one thing I would like to cover uh, within AWS Service SiteWise uh, recently, we give, uh, there was a recent feature that was added where you can directly export the data from uh, your lab data that is been, the equipment data that is ingested into the site-wise into S3, right? And this is going to be useful in case you wanted to build a data lake where you can ingest uh, data from all the site or equipment that you have uh, within your company. And also, uh, as I mentioned before, security is very important here, and that's our day zero job here at AWS. Wanted to talk about the security of SiteWise. And SiteWise uh, actually has support for VPC, which is a virtual private endpoint, 
where and this is a feature for customers that are not comfortable or not require not to be able to send any of the manufacturing data through the internet. And SiteWatch also support IAM, and you can use IAM identity access management to get access to your users for the monitoring portal. You can get admin right to some users using IAM and also give just users only access, which can prevent uh, those users to make changes to the monitoring uh, portal. And lastly, the data that is being ingested from uh, the edge gateway into AWS IoT SiteWise is also encrypted. And when the data is encrypt, uh, is ingested into AWS IoT SiteWise, it is also encrypted at rest using uh, Amazon KMS, Key Management Service. And you can also decide to encrypt your data with your own uh, keys as well. So this comes to the end of uh, the side of the demo for uh, AWS IoT SiteWise where we learn how to ingest data into the cloud and build a monitoring dashboard. And now I'm just going to jump back in my deck where uh, I will cover the second uh, demo for this session. And the second uh, part of today's session is to cover how you can improve the manufacturing quality, right? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, look out for vision is uh, a service that is managed by AWS that you can use to spot product defect and use computer vision to automate quality inspection. So just talking to, again, talking to a lot of uh, industrial uh, customers, right now on the production line, they have uh, supervisors, people locally at the, at the site and doing manual inspection of the product that has been manufactured. And we are all human being and we can make mistakes, right? We, we can make mistakes. So uh, here for this demo, let's take a look at a few pictures, right? And these are some normal images. So if I'm a customer that is actually manufacturing this uh, uh, circuit board here, and I have a few images, and these two images are normal, right? This is according to my quality control. And uh, I also have a few images with anomaly. As you can see here, this particular circuit board has a missing probe. And this one has a missing transistor, right? And in order for you to use Amazon Lookout for Vision, you have to be able to provide uh, the service a few images, up to 20, and the minimum is about 20 images that you can use for training. And you can provide a set of images with anomaly and a set of images labeled as normal that can be used to train uh, the machine learning model. So here is the console of Amazon Lookout for, for Vision, which is a service you can use to be more efficient and improve your quality inspection. And within uh, the Lookout for Vision uh, console here, the first thing you have to do to use a service is to create a project. And uh, here I have a project query, which is called Lookout for Vision Demo. Right. And when the project is created, the first thing you have to do is uh, the data set, create a data set. And when you create a data set, this is where you have the option to upload images that you have taken on your uh, production line, label those images and provide those images to the service to look at for Amazon Lookout for Vision. So here I have uploaded about 45 images and I put a label on those images, right? I have a few images here that are, you know, with anomaly and uh, I can go to the third page here. And I also have, have some images uh, that are normal, right? And again, the goal of all these images is to uh, train a model using Amazon Lookout for Vision. And you can import your, your images into Amazon S3. Right here, I have used Amazon S3 to upload these images. And then from S3, I created, uh, and within the Lookout for Vision, I created this data set using the images I have uploaded in Amazon S3. So now that you have your data set, you can decide to train a model. Right? So here the model, uh, and train the model, you can click here to train your model. And uh, I have actually created, uh, I have two models here. And the very first model is here. Let's take a look at it. And part of these models, when I, the model was run using the images that I uploaded, 
uh, the precision was about 73%, and which means that um, the lookout for vision machine learning service act was, was actually able to predict uh, 19 anomalies out of 26 predictions, right? And that's what I have a score of 73. And uh, it was able to, out of the, uh, the image that I uploaded, out of the 20 images with anomaly, it was able to detect that 19 of them actually have real anomalies and the overall performance is 82%. So again, these are all the images. So after you have uh, the matrix for a particular model, if you are not satisfied, one thing you can do here is to do a trial detection. You can do a trial detection, which is where you're actually trying to try the model out, right? And see how satisfied you are. And if you are not satisfied, satisfied with the matrix of the model, you can upload new images. You can go back and change the label of the data set. You can also add new verified images. And then when you add those information, you can go back and create a new model. And that's what I have done here. And I create a second model because I have added more images to look at for vision data set. And when that was done, I was um, able to get the second model. And as you can see here, the matrix that I have from model two is a little higher from what I had from the model one. So I have 87 compared to 75 that I had with model one. And you can see some metrics here. And if you are satisfied, because I'm satisfied with this particular model, I can decide uh, to use this model. So when you go to the second tab here, uh, it gives you some instruction on how you can use this particular model. And this model that has been created in a cloud with Lookout for Vision can, can be deployed locally at the edge on a panorama appliance which is uh, a computer vision appliance that can be connected to your camera. So that at the end of your production line, when you have your cameras taking pictures, those pictures will be available to the panorama appliance. And because the panorama appliance is going to be running this machine learning model, it will let you know automatically if the product that has that been manufactured has a defect or if it is normal. So for this demo, let's, I have a few pictures uh, on my computer here. And uh, we can use these pictures. Um, I'm going to actually, so because I don't have a panorama device right now, I'm actually going to use my computer as the panorama appliance where I'm going to deploy this machine learning model and then run this machine learning model from Lookout for Vision against a few pictures that I have on my computer. So let's try that out. Here are a few images I have on my uh, laptop here. And these are images with anomaly here, right? So you can see these images have anomalies here. And I'm going to run uh, the machine, look out for vision uh, machine learning model against these images. So for that, I will open uh, my comment prompt here. And what I will do here, I have already configured my command line with uh, the model and the model is running. I'm going to run this machine learning model against this image number four with anomaly. So when I click on enter, it will take a few seconds and I will have a result sent back to me in the console here. So here, after I run this uh, model against the image number four, the model is telling me that this particular image has an anom anomaly here and the confidence score is 84%. Let me select another pictures here the picture number five, and run this model again. Here, the model is telling me that this particular image has an anomaly, it's true, and the confidence is 65%. And before I jump out, let's take a look at uh, the image four and five. And this is the image four. As you can see, it has an anomaly here, I have a missing probe. And uh, this is image number four, right? And we have a prop that is playing. I can, and just for testing purposes, let's also run this machine learning model against normal images that I have on my computer. So I'm going to run this again, normal image number two. So what I'm doing here is to run this machine learning model against uh, image number two and number three that I have in my normal directory here on my computer. And 
This is the result coming from the uh, coming out, and the, these particular images are normal, right? And that's why I have a force here and the confidence of the machine learning model that uh, these particular images that don't have any anomaly is 98%. And for a third image, it is 99%. And uh, let's take a look at those images to confirm that they indeed do not have any anomaly. And this is a second image here that's not have any anomaly. And this is a third image, which is why it does not have any anomaly. And lastly, uh, you can use uh, the dashboard within uh, Amazon Liquid for Vision to see some dashboarding. And this is how uh, I have run uh, this model here. And you can see that I have 34 images processed. And out of these 34 images, uh, 24 have anomalies. Right? And you can use this monitoring dashboard here, or this dashboard within Lookout for Vision to have more insight and metrics about how uh, the machine learning is uh, performing. And before I end my demo on uh, Amazon Lookout for Vision, I wanted to cover security in Amazon Lookout for Vision. So here at AWS, security is a high priority. And uh, Amazon for Lookout for Vision also follows the security shared responsibility between uh, customers and AWS. And with this uh, security model, uh, customers are responsible for the service that they use while AWS is, is responsible to protect the infrastructure that is running uh, the Lookout for Vision service. And within Lookout for Vision, we also provide encryption at rest and also in transit. Amazon Lookout for Vision has uh, support for key MS, right? And by default, we use Amazon Key Management Service to encrypt uh, the data, has support for IAM, and also support for CloudTrail and CloudWatch that you can use to monitor uh, the access to uh, your Amazon account, AWS account, and also is compliant with the GDPR regulation as well. And lastly, Amazon Lookout for Vision has support for VCP, VPC endpoint that customers can use if they don't want to go, uh, if they don't want the communication from uh, the cloud to the edge going through the public internet. So now I'm going to do a quick recap of everything uh, we have covered in today's webinar. We configure an edge gateway, have the edge gateway connected to a Kepler OPC US server, create a model and asset hierarchy in sidewise metrics that can be used for OEE computation, and uh, create a monitoring dashboard that could be used to visualize all uh, the data that is being ingested into the in IoT sidewise near real time. And for a lookout for vision, show you how you can use data set to create training images and how you can print a model with the images that you have provided to Amazon Lookout for Vision service and how you can use uh, the machine learning model that has been created by Amazon Lookout for Vision locally on a plant floor to detect anomalies with, within your manufacturing process. So in order for you to continue your journey, I will leave you a few resources you can use. And uh, this is a very good website about Amazon for industrial, where we have a lot of blogs, common industrial workload, um, eBooks that you can use to get some education about uh, all the services and common architecture for Amazon for industrial, and also have a list of some of the partners that can support you with, for your digital transformation or industry 4.0 initiative. And also the Lookout for Vision website here is very useful. It has a great resources as well. And lastly, uh, Amazon Quick Start for IMC Kit. It is a kit that uh, you can use as well. And this is the website. And part of this kit, we give CloudFormation template that you can use to create virtual assets and virtual and a virtual OPC UA using Ignition or Kepler OPC UA server, create asset model within Sitewise and build monitoring dashboard. And again, this is just all in cloud formation that you can use and create a demo within your own account. And you can see the data that has been ingested into AWS Sitewise. And again, this is also a very good resource that you can use uh, to continue your journey. And uh, I do want to thank you very much for your time today and uh, 
I will be taking questions at this standpoint.